Hey guys, Ronnie Calhoun here with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. Got my buddies Richard Burke and Marcus Archer in the studio today. How are you guys doing? Good, good man. Appreciate y'all coming in. I know y'all are both a couple of busy guys, but uh, we have something fun to talk about today. Yes, we and, do. And uh, you guys are both a part of the Natchez Disc Golf Club. Yep. And um, what we wanted to do today is to tell a lot of the viewers out there that there's Natch there's disc golf in Natchez now. A lot of people still don't know that, right? Yeah, when we play at the Duncan Park, the course is there. And when we play, we still get after uh, just uh, over a year now, a year and three, four, five months, something like that, yeah. um, the course has been there. We still get asked, hey, I, I walk here. I was wondering what those metal things are. So if you see the metal things, the weird basket-looking things and the concrete uh, rectangular tee pads, that's, that's the disc golf course there. It kind of weaves in the dead space in between uh, the Duncan Park golf course, in between the holes there. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. Well, how did, it, how did this come to be? Well, um, so I got into disc golf in about 2020. Um, during the lockdown, there's nothing more socially distanced than the sport yeah. of disc golf. So uh, we went out. I went out to a park after buying a starter set of three different Frisbees and went out and started throwing at objects. Um, I had started a Facebook page called Natchez Disc Golf, and it piqued the interest of a few other people in town that I didn't even know played. One of those was Tate Hobdy, um, who was president of Rotary um, – around the time when uh, Mayor Gibson got elected and he got with me and uh, Rico Gianni, the former city planner. Um, we got all the city stuff lined up. And since the park is in Duncan Park, um, we had to get you know preservation approvals and archives and history approvals due to um, a landmark being 300 feet away from the course. So we did that side of it. Rotary did a lot of fundraising. So did the Community Alliance. A lot. Um, we got in a guy named Doug Williams to design the course. He's a prolific name in Mississippi, disc golf, uh, designed some of my favorite courses like uh, Chautauqua Park um, up in Crystal Springs, the Res in Jackson, um, Halls Ferry Park in Vicksburg. So he had some really good courses behind his name. Got the layout done, poured some pads, put some baskets in the ground. And uh, we always had it in mind to make it a course that a casual player could play but also had a challenge for, for a pro-level player as well. So i um, very happy that that, that came about. And uh, you hit the chains once and you're addicted, so um, the, the club keeps growing. Yeah, that's there's, cool, man. There's something about that sound. When you hit, when you hear that Frisbee, you hear it, you hear it hit those chains, it's like, oh, that's a, that's a sweet sound. But yeah, it's hard, it's hard not to go back. So uh, I've, I've never played, so I guess I'm, I'm a little ignorant on this. So is this like nine holes or 18 holes? Is it like golf, the same type deal as far as the amount of holes and stuff? It's very similar to golf in it's 18 holes, similar to golf in uh, style of play and, and a lot of the rules. Now, some of the rules like out of bounds and some things like that are a little different because a Frisbee is a little different than a golf ball. Um you know, in golf, you play a ball where it lies. In disc golf, you can kind of, as long as your foot's behind the disc, you can kind of lean out and throw and some things like that. But generally, broadly speaking, it's very similar to golf. Now, our course in the tournament will have um, 19 holes to make room for extra cards and things. And some courses have an extra hole or, or it'd be a 21-hole course. But generally speaking, it's similar to golf. You Least amount of strokes from the tee box to the basket uh, to get it in the basket, and and you you birdie, bogey, par. It's, it's scoring, it's same scoring system. Yeah. One, one big difference with ball golf, as we call it, is disc golfers um, is is free to play mm -hmm. in a lot of courses. Very few courses charge, and at Duncan Park, if as long as you buy a twenty dollar starter set or spend eight dollars on one base plastic frisbee. You're you're good to play as much as you want. So. Okay, that's what I was about to ask you. How can people play if they watch this and they want to try it out? Well, big shout out to Sports Center who yes. has is now carrying discs here locally. They're the only place locally that does so. They actually just got a a, a new shipment in of uh, some really really great Innova disc. Innova is one of the big companies in disc golf. They have them and some uh, Trilogy, which is a kind of a combination of three companies. Um, and uh, they carry Frisbees there. They have some starter sets and then some more advanced discs uh, for better players. But you can go pick up, like I said, a disc that's anywhere from 8 to about $25. That's about the most you'll ever spend on, on, on a single disc. Um, so it's, it's uh, cheaper than ball golf, too. As someone who plays ball golf, 
um, equipment is expensive and you lose balls and those can get expensive. In disc golf, um, it only is expensive because you're obsessed and want to buy a new Frisbee <laughs> and want to buy new plastic. But uh, yeah, I've, I've played a course that cost money before, um, which was a private course, but uh, it's the overwhelming majority of any course you're ever going to play is public, it's free, uh, and, and you just show up and play. So like we show up any time? Is there, is there, are there certain hours that you can go? Where, where, where do you go? I, I know we said Duncan Park, but where do you go to start it? Well, I mean, you got to go when the sun's out, obviously. But um, at Duncan Park, you would go to the pavilion in the, the middle of the course. Yeah. So you just go to the pavilion at Duncan Park, and you just kind of go out there and start. Do you have to talk to anybody? No, no, no. So the, the pavilion he's talking about is the one right after you have the, the tennis courts on the main road, the tennis courts and the baseball field, and there's a pavilion right after that. And there's a big sign there uh, that Rotary put up that kind of shows the whole course, and that's where hole one is. Um, and, and yeah, you just, you just go play. Yeah, and there's an app called Udisc as well. And the course is on Udisc and it will give you, it generates things like a course map. It's all geolocated. It's like you're on Google maps and your little blue dot that you will follow you up to the next tee. Wow. And it also has a scorecard function on it as well. Mm -hmm. so. That's really cool. So it's free to play as long as you can, the sun's out, you're good. Yeah. Um, Who's the biggest cheater of the group so far? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say nothing. I didn't want to say anything, you know. I no. call it handicapping. <laughs> so two more quick questions because, like I said, I, I don't know anything about it. And I feel like a lot of people out there, even though some people may, there's probably a lot that don't. Yeah, so well, just to educate yeah. them real quick, um, two questions. How, how many discs do you need to really get started? And then how long does it take to play a, a round or whatever? Technically, you only need one disc. Um, generally, there's about, there's really four different uh, categories of discs. Though there, there, there would be like putters, uh, mid-ranges, fairway drivers, and then like distance drivers. But if you have one disc, you can go out there and play. Uh, generally, a starter set would include a putter and like a mid-range and like a fairway driver, which would be... Now, uh, the difference between disc golf and, and ball golf is that in ball golf, clubs just hit the ball sh shorter or farther. In disc golf, the discs are themselves are made to go more left or go more right or go farther or have less glide or, you know, so there's some variations. But really, you only need one disc. But once you feel the change, you how many discs do you have, Richard? Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it gets it gets obsessive yeah. really quickly. You only need... One, one disc, disc to, to, to actually start, start playing. But a, a good place. So, so you can buy like an actual starter pack. Yep. Okay. Right. And Sports I mean, Center has a starter pack. Yeah, they have, they have a few of them. And then generally speaking, depending on how fast or how slow you play, I would say you could play Duncan Park um, in an hour and a half or less uh, if you if you just go out there and play. If you're playing with four or five people, it'll take, it'll take a couple hours maybe. But that's a full 18 holes. That's still cool. You could get off of work and go out there and hang out for a little while, get some stress off of you. Especially yeah. in the summer. And I would certainly suggest that somebody just go and pick up a starter pack. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there's different factors in disc golf, like the weight of the disc and um, your distance drivers. You have to throw it a certain number of miles per hour to get it to do what it's designed to do. And those starter sets have the beginner in mind. So they're generally lighter weight and slower speed. So they'll, they'll get you used to the game before you move up to more advanced. Yes, yeah, so like putters are generally a little heavier. Uh, and are a little more blunt edge so that they go a little slower, they hit the chains, and the chains sort of grab it in a way. And so drivers are a little more uh, sharp edge, so they cut through uh, the wind, be a little more aerodynamic. So Yeah, I have to come out and uh, try it out before too long. Um, you mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, the, a tournament coming up. So you guys have a tournament coming up on April 22nd, which by the time this comes out, it'll be the coming Saturday. Um, it's the first PDGA event at Duncan Park. Tell me a little bit about how many people are playing and tell me about the tournament. Well, I'll just speak a little first. I'll let Richard go. Is it's, um, <clears throat> is the first disc golf tournament ever in Natchez. So the course has been here just over a year, and we already have a tournament, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, and we have uh, 90 slots that we're trying to fill. We've had, we've had some drops, so we're in the 80s, I think, right now as far as um, how many people have signed up for the tournament officially? 
Um, and uh, those numbers tend to fluctuate uh, as you get closer to the tournament, depending on weather and, you know, things like that. Um, but we are intending uh, to have 90 uh, people in the tournament, and that'd be a full, that'd be a full crew. Uh, and, uh, and so it, it will start at like 730 that morning, and they'll be around uh, a lunch break, or, or start at 830 that morning, they'll be around a lunch break for about an hour, and then a second round. And there's divisions all the way from uh, junior division uh, and, and everything from like an MA4, which is a lower level amateur, all the way up to a pro division. And so there's MA1, 2, 3, and 4. There's FA, which is the female 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's a junior division. There's age protected divisions, which is like a um, 40 plus, 50 plus, that kind of thing. And then there's a MPO and FPO, which is the pro division. And they the big difference is if they win, they they win cash. Uh, and if, if I were to win my division, because I'm playing in the tournament, I'm playing in MA2. If I were to win my division, which is not going to happen, um, <laughs> I would win a uh, payout in plastic or, or credit toward a disc golf store that's actually going to be on site there. So That's cool, man. That covered a lot of it. Um, I would like to say that um, I'm really happy to see a, a very robust and good pro field. Um, I don't want to leave out any pro names, but – a couple of them were out practicing last Saturday. Mm -hmm. Thunder Schultz out of Baton Rouge and a Chad Sherbert who just took down Pot of Gold in New Orleans, which is a huge three-day tournament. So it's going to be fun going out there and watching those guys play. This is a, I'm not actually playing in the tournament. I'm assistant tournament director. So um, I'll be kind of running the tournament. So You got caught cheating. Actually, so no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I'll actually get to go see those guys throw a few holes and I'm, I'm yeah. really excited about that. And before we came on air, you guys were talking about, um, they were coming, you had people that were going to be playing coming from Shreveport and New Orleans and Hattiesburg and a, a pretty good ways away from all directions. Yeah, That's really cool. Four and a half, five hours away. Um, we did decide to do the tournament when there wasn't a big tournament, um, going on at the time. Um, I mean, there is Champions Cup, but those are top-level pros playing yeah, in Georgia. Yeah. I doubt we'd attract them to our first seat here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's it's really encouraging to see um, people from far and wide coming to Natchez on a great weekend when we're having the car show mm -hmm. and touch a truck and Sammy's throwing the Bluff City Block Party. So, live at five weekend, too. So, really, really is a champion, champion weekend. Yeah, that's Natchez right. That weekend. That's right. It's, it's becoming more and more champion weekends in that because every time we turn around, we have weekends like this going, and it's great for the it's great for the um, the local economy. Yeah, they, a lot of these players will come in. They'll stay in a hotel. They'll they'll go eat uh, somewhere. That you know might even uh, get a kick out of something and come back another weekend because uh, they like Natchez. And just a quick big shout out. I'm not going to list all of them because I, I I would forget some, but. The community, in large part, really like got behind us as um, at, for sponsoring this tournament, being whole sponsors and making the tournament happen. Uh, there is a long list of of people, uh, businesses, individuals, and so rather than leave some out, I'm just going to leave it general at that. Yeah. Um, but it is it was not hard to find people who were willing to get behind this disc golf tournament at, at a pretty high level of commitment. Um, and, and so it's, that was really, really cool to see in our first tournament when most of the people we were going to say, would you sponsor this? Weren't really sure what disc golf was. Okay. They, they were sure they wanted people to come to Natchez though. And so they got behind it and, uh, and we will have a high, high level tournament. Um, and it will be an event more than just a tournament, which is really cool. And our trophies, I will give a shout out to Tance Hughes for our trophies because they are quite unique and he's making them this metal. And I've seen the, the preview of it and they look pretty amazing. Yeah, so so. Well, that's cool, man. So how can people find you guys? I see right here, Natchez Disc Golf at Gmail. And um, then on that's Facebook. Our email. We have a Facebook group called Natchez Disc Golf. Um, we're on the courses on UDisc if you want to. Um, see like the layout of our course or That's need to know how to play it. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're out there online, but Natchez uh, disc golf on Facebook is probably the best way to find out when we'll be out there playing and upcoming events. So we're, we're happy for beginners and, and new people to come. Can I give one more shout out real go quick? Ahead, go ahead. Just to Ryan Porter and Weston Sparrow. Weston's our president of disc golf and Ryan's the vice president, but Ryan's the tournament director for our tournament. Yeah. Those two have done 
uh, just a ton of yeah. work for the course itself, but but to recruit people, sponsors, all those things to make it a great tournament, um, players packs, all these things that happen. Those two have done a ton, along with Richard, who's also assistant tournament director and i just don't want to leave them no 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 hey this. look i got you man um, because I got they you. deserve they, they deserve, deserve a huge shout that's because, right um th this golf uh here in natchez is a lot of what it is because of people like uh like ryan porter and west okay so. great all right well i want to thank you guys for watching this i hope you learned as much as i did um they, these guys have me curious and, and excited to go try this out um i want to say thank you to all of our awesome partners out there who make these interviews possible Without you guys, we don't even have a show. So thank you for that. Uh, God bless everybody out there watching this. And as always, have a champion day. Juliana and Ronnie with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight, and we're here to tell you about one of our awesome partners, Wardo's Po Boys. Wardo's Po Boys was created in honor of Alan Ward Granning III, finally known by family and friends as Wardo. In 2019, the oldest brother of the tribe passed away unexpectedly. His remaining siblings and loved ones wanted to honor his memory in a special way. In 2022, Ward's family decided to combine the need for a sandwich shop in downtown Natchez with the desire to pay tribute to Ward's love of good friends, good times, and great food. Through blood, sweat, tears, and countless hours of hard work, Wardo's was born. So go visit Wardo's at 309 North Broadway Street in Natchez. Where the po' boys are so good, you'll swear you're in Cajun country. Hey guys, Ronnie and Juliana here with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. We want to tell you about our awesome partners, J.E. Hicks Distributing Company, also known as Hicks Chicks. Hicks Chicks is a local, family-owned food distribution company that has been serving the Miss Lou since 1945. You already know they serve all of your favorite restaurants, but did you know they are also open to the public? Hicks has a wide variety of food products, including delicious heat and eat options like chicken and dumplings, white bean chicken chili, lasagna, and gumbo. They also carry a wide variety of seafood options like shrimp, crabs, tuna steaks, salmon, and catfish. Don't forget about their famous TNT burgers that are already patted up for you and their amazing dessert options. So go see the awesome team at Hicks Chicks at 1380 MLK Junior Road in Natchez. Hicks Chicks, way more than just chicken. Welcome to your new hospital, Trinity Medical. Located in Faraday, Trinity Medical is the only acute care facility in the Tri-Parish area. Here you will find an active pursuit of holistic health, a strong, honest group of clinicians, and a consciousness of others that transcends the 80,000 square feet committed to you and your loved ones. Trinity Medical. People you know, caring for people you love. Hey y'all, Juliana and Ronnie with Miss Lee Champion Spotlight, and we're here to tell you about our awesome partner, Natchez Heating and Cooling. That's right, our friends at Natchez Heating and Cooling are here for you. They make sure you never have to worry about your home's health or efficiency. They have an expert team who can take care of all of your AC, heating, plumbing, and electrical needs. When you need them, they show up. It's as simple as that. So call our friends at Natchez Heating and Cooling today and make sure to tell them you heard about them from Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. Hey guys, Ronnie Calhoun here with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. We want to tell you about our awesome partner, Dr. Greg and Greg Veterinary Hospital. Greg Veterinary Hospital has been providing comprehensive, reliable, cutting edge veterinary services to pets in the Miss Lou since 2002. 
They welcome pets of all shapes and sizes who are in need of emergency treatment or who require routine medical, surgical, and dental care. Dr. Greg and his team offer a long list of services, including in-house laboratory diagnostics, digital x-ray, soft tissue orthopedic surgery, dental care, extractions, laser surgery, laser therapy, preventative health, and wellness plans. And if you need grooming and boarding services, they do that too. So call Greg Veterinary Hospital today. Hey y'all, it's Juliana Wallace. And if you like what we're doing here at Miss Latavia Spotlight, make sure to like, follow, and share on all of our social media platforms. It costs you nothing, and it helps us continue to spread positivity all throughout the Miss Lou.